Hello, this is Robert Syrett. Welcome back to Know Your Nodes, an addendum to the spline segment that I did just a few minutes ago. Uh, it kind of escaped my attention somehow that the CPU had suddenly crept up to just around 80%, which is pretty high for my desktop, but still manageable. However, it really causes a lot of glitching when I put that on my iPad, especially my iPad mini. In fact, I don't think this would run on my iPad mini. So this is going to be a little quick tutorial about how to streamline a patch that has too much, uh, too much extra. First thing you do is you can press T to toggle the uh, CPU usage screen, or there's a little clock on the uh, iPad that you can press. And the numbers over each module will show uh, what proportion of time the CPU is spending on each of these modules. And then the value in the corner is how much uh, capacity overall of the CPU the patch is using up. That's why if you sum all these together, they're not going to equal to 100. Um, but you can see that these are by far the most CPU intensive units in the patch. And when we look inside of them, see there isn't any one given a component that's like really causing the problem. It's the fact that there's eight splines in each one and a phaser. Uh, and so that's eight times eight, that's 64 splines that modulus is processing. And really it only needs to be eight. So we're gonna go in and trim the fat. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of move things that aren't part of this little submodule away. All right. I don't necessarily have to disconnect them. In fact, leaving them uh, connected is going to be easier so that when I group them, they'll make uh, little inlets and outlets automatically. But I do want to give myself some space to patch around. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just go in and take out the wavetable that has the most information. Sometimes when you paste things, they show up and the XY location of inside of this. Uh, so like, even though this seems to be infinite space, there is actually an XY coordinate. And when I'm copying here and I'm pasting here, I paste it in the XY coordinate that was inside of this module. Copy, paste. funny, usually this is the part that I enjoy doing because it's quiet and meditative. But now that I'm making a tutorial video, I feel like it's a lot of empty space. Uh, but if I'm honest, a lot of the patching in Audulus is kind of a little bit repetitive, a little bit meditative. Six. I'll just be thinking numbers most of the time, you know, like six, 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 seven, 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 eight, eight, eight. All right. Now, instead of using the anti-aliasing filter that was a part of the array of splines that's in the spline library, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with a half measure and just accept that aliasing is gonna be a part of this sound and just think about how uh, one day people will look back and think about that was one of the characteristics like VHS tapes were from the 80s aliasing was from like the uh, early 2000s it's good enough
Okay, now I'm going to double check that I wired it correctly. By pulling it out, I can see that I've missed one. That's the third one down. And correct that. Okay, that looks right. I can put it back where it's nice and tidy. Oh, I need to add an oscillator. Each of these used to have their own oscillator, but now they're just going to have one and have to share it. So I'm going up to Synthesis, Phaser, and I'm doing the usual thing where I reduce the output from 0 to 2 pi back down to 0 to 1. So x divided by 2 divided by pi. Go around to the other side. And change this from being hertz to being 1 per an octave. So exponent of 2 is our signal times the reference frequency 440. Now I connect this to this. Uh, we're live again. Let's take a little listen. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. And in fact, you can see we're down to 14% uh, from, from 80, which is a pretty good place. Okay, uh, never heard to have too many examples of this. I'm just going to show how you can group everything together. It's kind of separated, right? I'm not including anything that I wouldn't want to have as interior part of the patch. Then I press group. Bring everything closer together. And let's relabel those outlets. That we can leave. That's fine. Uh, this is going to be the sweep. Is the sweep input. And I would like also to add a knob for width. Subpatch. Hey, let's use the clamp knob. Clamp knob, you can't directly label it, so we're gonna use text node again. And expose that text node for the width that it really is. Oh, and that doesn't need to be called uh, two times x minus one. We can just leave that blank. It's assumed that the one output is gonna be the output for the module. Move things away from the spawn point a little bit. And lock. That looks pretty good. Okay. I could uh, I could spend more time polishing that interface. I could put little uh, blinking lights on inputs and outputs, uh, but I think you get the point for now. All right, thank you very much. Join me again next time when I'll build something else.